The United States has conducted a census every 10 years since 1790, 14 years after the founding of the nation. And the 2020 census will be the 24th time the population of the United States is to be estimated to the best of the Census Bureau's ability. The number is expected to be over 330 million. The United States is a country of immigrants. From the time of the arrival of Christopher Columbus in 1492, through the founding of the state in 1776, to the civil rights victories of the 1970s, the native population of the United States was using guns and laws more actively and smallpox and measles more passively, killed, enslaved and resettled. Today, only 1.6% of the US population associates as Native American. Estimates put the number of humans on the American continent higher than the equivalent of Europe when Columbus disembarked on current day Bahamas. But in this video, we will focus on the population numbers in the US census data. At the time of the first census in 1790, the population was found to be just under 4 million, the equivalent of current day Oklahoma. Virginia was the most populous state at the time, of the 16 included. Here, every block represents 100,000 inhabitants. All numbers are rounded down, so the population of Vermont, Maine, Rhode Island, Delaware, Kentucky and Georgia, all below 100,000 in 1790, is so far without representation on this map. Ever since the late 18th century, the census data has been criticized with different levels of intensity for undercounting the population, something both Thomas Jefferson and George Washington expressed themselves. Though some census data has been corrected later, some of the data from the earlier census has been lost to history. Though women and slaves are counted in the census data, they aren't to be named in the surveys until the mid-19th century. The native population isn't counted at all until the 1860 census, and even then only those living outside reservations were included. In the 1810 census, New York passes Virginia as the largest state in the Union, a position it will hold on to for 150 years. Following the Louisiana Purchase from France in 1803, expanding the United States territory west, the shared ownership of Oregon with the United Kingdom, and the Mexican-American War obtaining current day Texas and California, and the United States had reached the Pacific Ocean. In the later half of the 19th century, Alaska was bought from Russia and the Queen of Hawaii overthrown, making them states 49 and 50 respectively, while Guam, Puerto Rico, American Samoa, the US Virgin Islands and the Northern Mariana Islands remained American territories. The Philippines, the Marshall Islands, Micronesia and Palau gained independence, and the Panama Canal was returned to its by name righteous owner, making the United States complete as of today. Meanwhile, the population grew as a result of so-called natural growth, with a fertility rate over 7 in the early 1800s, but also as a result of voluntary immigration, mainly from Europe, as well as involuntary migration, mainly from Africa. Over 350,000 people were forced to migrate to current-day United States during the 1700s, especially to the southern states, who would eventually go to war for the right to keep and sell and enslave workers on their ever-so-successful cotton plantations, leading to their loss in the American Civil War in the 1860s. In the 1910 census, Wyoming, still today the smallest of the states, is the last, apart from yet to be states Alaska and Hawaii, to pass 100,000 inhabitants. In the 1920 census, the population had for the first time reached 100 million. At the same time, New York State had passed 10 million. The fertility rate had decreased fast since the mid-1800s, from around 5 babies born per woman to just over 2 in the 1930s and during World War II. Alongside many families being divided during the war, forcing the fertility rate down. Internal migration also played a key role in the northeast population decrease when a booming war industry created jobs and opportunities elsewhere. While Florida, Michigan, Texas, Virginia 
In Northeast California grew fast during this time. New York and Pennsylvania saw a clear population loss. During the last two years of the war, following the Normandy invasion, even the national population decreased in size. After the war, the fertility rate went up to a peak of 3.7 in the early 1960s, only to fall back down even below 2 just 15 years later. Pennsylvania and California passes 10 million in the late 1940s. We can see that fertility peak in a population pyramid with a population one block per million people here, separated by age and gender. Passing through the 1950s and the 1960s, we can see the fewer babies born during the depression and the war aging, followed by the baby boomers and the post-war era. The post-war cities faced a large housing crisis, and with political incentives, large, low-density suburbs were built in the course of a couple of decades. An increase in car ownership and a new interstate highway infrastructure reduced the importance of distance between work and home. Standardized building methods and an industrialization of the building industry set off large migration away from city centers to the city outskirts, and city job opportunities and tax income declined. At the same time, racial divides increased, when minorities were, as a result of socio-economic disadvantages, ever so present in an era of increased home ownership, unable to move to the same extent, resulting in spatially visible divisions between rich and poor. In 1963, New York State had passed 17.4 million, but it is now only the second largest state, trailing California by 200,000 inhabitants. California will keep the top position up until this day. By the time of the moon landing in 1969, the population had reached 200 million. Illinois, Texas and Ohio passed 10 million in the 1960s. In the 1970s, the suburbs separated from the cities further, with the development of so-called edge cities, larger, more concentrated parts of suburbs, with commercial and business opportunities. Larger suburbs reduced farmland, further increasing the change to highly industrialized agriculture, creating higher yields per acre that before breakthrough technological innovations would seem impossible. The city that saw this the most was New York. As a result of industries seeking more space and a lower price per square mile than Manhattan could offer, and people with economical possibility seeking lower crime rates and a lower price per square mile, New York City went into a rather sharp population decline, forcing the city into a fiscal crisis. The United States has experienced fast urbanization, going from 20% of the population living in urban areas in 1860 to over 80% today. During World War II and the 1970s, the development stalled, however, and since the 1990s, the level has stabilized. Even though the development in New York City in particular changed for the better in the 1980s, at least when it comes to population levels, the large, suburban, low-density sprawls are defining life for around half of the population of the United States to this day with the economic, social, and environmental impacts it contributes to. One of the changes that turned the city centers back to population growth was in no doubt a reduction in crime, a result of both an increase in police force and their legal scope of action, incarcerating an increasing number of citizens for both violent and drug-related crimes. But also as a result of legalized abortions nationwide reducing the number of children born to poor, socially vulnerable parents, an aging population with a rising income, and a reduction in lead exposure through chemical changes in paint and gasoline, reducing the use of the toxic metal and its neurologically damaging and aggravating effects on humans. Going back to the population pyramid, we can see the baby boomers growing older, while baby groups coming behind are following a more linear fashion due to the fact that during the last few decades the fertility rate has been stable around point of reproduction, just above two babies born per woman. While the largest growth in absolute numbers occur in the largest states of Florida, Texas and California, the highest percentage growth can be found in western states like Arizona, Utah, Idaho and Nevada.
In 2007, the United States passed 300 million inhabitants. And while most other neighboring nations will see a population stagnation and even decline in the coming decades, the United States is projected to see a continued growth for at least the next century. This is both a result of a by comparison high fertility rate and immigration, which we'll come back to in a later video. We will end with an uninterrupted view of the population expansion across the American continent from the first census of 1790 to the projected results of the ongoing 24th census of 2020.